everything is racist. Every white person in this country is racist. We gotta take these motherfuckers out. All things that begin end. White folks are not infinite and eternal. Right? They ain't gonna go on for infinity and infinity. And that's super important to remember that white colonialism and imperialism has a beginning. And in my way of thinking about the world, that means it has an end. The thing I wanna say to you is we gotta take these motherfuckers out. But I know, but like, we can't say that. I am a uh, darker skinned, um, shaved headed, brown, queer person with um, my perfect shade of lipstick on. I would say thinking about uh, really everything is racist in most workplaces. I don't know if there's any particular uh, examples. It's like literally the, the structure itself, whether it's promotion strategy, what are considered professional, right? And then how we define professional, who's considered professional, um, expectations around dress and thinking about um, outfits and clothing that you're expected to have, hairstyles. Those are all practices that often are interconnected to race, which often we don't talk about. And so they intersectionality is deep. Even just part of the hierarchical power structure of the way we think about organizing with CEOs and boards and managers and directors, like that all feels really uh, white supremacist in nature, not just racist. Discussions about higher education's failure to diversify faculty and leadership, whiteness has rarely been implicated. The long-standing rules of presidential searches were created at a time when higher education was predominantly white, and they have continued reproducing whiteness in the college presidents. To break this cycle, it is clear that we must break those outdated and inequitable rules. The second we talk about that every white person in this country is racist, and they're racist in the sense that they benefit from the structure the way that it is. Okay. So they don't have to, um, I mean, White people always think, well, I don't, you know, I'm not a racist. I mean, I would never use a racial slur. I don't mm -hmm. do this. I don't do that. Mm -hmm. um, and so, um, so unfortunately, though, that that sort of reaction is a way that I've also seen um, all of us respond with when we are asked to confront our privileges. Walker said the term minor attracted people or MAPS should be used to describe people who are attracted to children. It's less stigmatizing than other terms like pedophile. Uh, a lot of people, when they hear the term pedophile, they automatically assume that it means a sex offender. Uh, and that isn't true. And it leads to a lot of misconceptions about attractions toward minors. White people don't really understand racism. <laughs> And so if I'm relying on other white people to teach me about racism, that can only go so far. I only best understand racism by talking to people who are directly impacted by racism. There's a different cost for my friends of color to be in relationship with me. So I think one of the things that's really important is ongoing being a friend. Whiteness is not phenotypic whiteness. There's white people and there's people who happen to be white, for sure. Anyone that is born in the world, because whiteness is global, can absolutely abide by tenets of whiteness. This is why we have Candace Owens. This is why we have Daniel J. Cameron. This is why we have black folks who will say critical race theory is trash. I'm still just really confused by whiteness. I'm sorry, like... Whiteness represents white guilt, white fragility, white supremacy, white violence. Uh, all of these things are now synonymous with whiteness, which I see as a stand-in for white supremacy does that full breakdown make it a little bit clearer yeah it's 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 a yes it's a theory okay yes it's not a theory what are specific situations that, that you want to address that like actual real concrete situations i think you know there are um racist situations that happen in classrooms and uh it's to try to overcome those and to make create a safe environment for all what students. situations so what, like what? what Tensions what? in the classroom. Over what? Specifically? Over race. What, what, how, is that, how would that manifest itself in, in a, Through dialogues and discussion in the classroom. Well, what do you mean by that? Is there bias? I mean, I'm just trying to yes. actually understand a concrete example of what you're talking about. Right. So I think bias occurs. It's, it's a natural um, part of life. I mean, some of it's learned. Some of it is, um, you know, but it can be unlearned.
these dialogues will allow people to be more conscious of their own biases and try different ways of well, uh, no problem. But what are examples of bias in this setting? That you're talking about, that's all I'm trying to figure out. Like, what, are, what are you specifically trying to do? Uh, and can you send me her and how to um, as well. work better together? I think that's our initial, that's what we want to do here. The question is, in light of that misery, is it worth it to be white anymore? White women also hang on to this whiteness to the extent that that contradicts their own ability to then form alliances with women of color. And as white women do uh, suffer this, de you know, this um, demeaning lifestyle, it's contradicted by their own racial loyalty to the white na um, nation. And I think the same question could be posed to white women in different kinds of um, themes that we could pose, but is it also worth it for white women to be white anymore? That's why I'm coming up with this recent understanding that to abolish whiteness is to abolish white people. And that's very uncomfortable, perhaps, but it asks about our definitions of what race is and what racial justice might mean. All white people are racist. So <laughs> I put this up because I really want any white person in the room to know up front that this is what we're dealing with, that it's not gonna be this coddling of white tears and what that looks like. We're not gonna discuss, oh, maybe some of us have worked it out. No, you're always gonna be racist, actually. So even when you're on your path to trying to figure out how to be a better human being, um, because I believe that white people are born into not being human, like that actually, instead of people of color and black folks being dehumanized, that actually everyone is dehumanized off rip within white supremacy, that y'all are born into a life to not be human, and that's what y'all are taught to do, to be demons. So in this particular way, white people are all racist.